how you killing two birds with one stone. This is Jill. She's a Syracuse University graduate student, and she's preparing to host a party. Between school and work, there is no time to watch scheduled television shows. If I am watching anything on Netflix, I'm usually also doing something else, even if it's a movie I haven't seen. She's an example of the cable cutting trend. In her case, it's more convenient not to be tied to a television set. We do a lot of stuff all the time, and when you're wired in, it's, that's how you go about it. So it's just a shift in accessibility. With services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, she can use a smartphone, Roku device, or tablet to watch what she wants on her schedule. You have more access at a lower cost, both in terms of effort and investment in technology and all of that, so why not take it? And that's not even mentioning money. According to the NPD group, the average basic cable subscription bill is around $90 per month, double what it was in 2001. Compare that to $8 per month for a standard Netflix subscription, and it seems like a no-brainer. But there is a catch. Cable has some stuff on it that you can't get on Netflix. Cable has some stuff on it that you can't get on Hulu. Uh, cable has some stuff on it that you can't get. If you have generous friends, you can get around that problem. Like many students, I gyp friends and family for their HBO Go. But Jill's also a sports fan. What about that and other live events? That goes back to the Jim Beam model. I want you to buy the whole bottle. I don't want you to buy just a shot. Bill Hasso used to be the vice president of public relations for Time Warner Cable. He says cable companies bank on customers wanting live sporting events. That's the way they're selling it, and they're being very successful. I mean, are, are you going to give up cable and lose ESPN? If you can't live without sports, you can still get your fix. I used my mother's Time Warner cable to sign in, and so I am watching all my Olympics on um, NBCOlympics.com. In most cases, it still requires relying on someone else's cable subscription to have that access. With cable-exclusive programming like The Wire, The Newsroom, and Game of Thrones, Americans are not quite ready to quit cable entirely just yet. But with so many ways to watch television through the internet, you'd think cable companies would jump at the chance to take their product online. In the long-term future, the direct to um, the customer is going to make an awful lot more sense. It's, it's really so why hasn't it happened yet? The only thing that held us back was the programmers. They realized the fact that, okay, these guys can sell programs individually. And before cable, you'd get an antenna. Technology outpaces economics, and streaming is just one of television's latest innovations. You know, it used to come over the air, then it came over cable. Now it comes uh, streaming onto our uh, uh, internet. In 10 years, there could be laser unicorns who deliver it directly to our cerebral cortexes. Who knows? Maybe that's a stretch. For now, though, Jill knows what her priorities are. Wherever I end up permanently, I, because of sports, I will get cable again. In the meantime, enjoying life with friends isn't a bad substitute. Norman Seawright, NCC News.